Yes! <laughs> Spilling guts. Back at it again. Here we go. We gotta wait for that beat to drop. You guys know how I like to do. Here it comes. One, two, three, and uh. do you think we could get like an EDM like remix? Oh my god. Listen, I think that's why TikTok thinks I speak Spanish. <laughs> have to do with spanish because i am super in and i've been trying to like label the genre (laughs) welcome to spill your guts with rachel and mandy this is this is how we do this okay i've been trying to find the genre but it's like this like calypso steel drum trance EDM, like Latino, Brazilian ooh, ooh, ooh. music. No English. I don't know what they're saying, but ooh. I cannot get enough of it. Like a little Gypsy <laughs> Kings vibe, kind of? It's so it's so good. I'll Maybe I'll end the show with five sec, 30 seconds of a song, maybe. Please. Jesse, know. You know what I've been into, which is weird? Are we just going to take a moment to share our TikTok uh, obsessions real quick? Yeah. I feel like, we, I feel like it, it's fine. Right? That's yeah, spiritual well, we, work. Yes. Right? That's fucking real. Uh, definitely lo-fi tavern music. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a whole playlist on Spotify that you could look up. Like mellow tavern music for like, you know, a bedtime routine. <laughs> it makes you just feel like, you know, like a, like a, like a bar wench that's just like had a really fulfilling day, but like. <laughs> very satisfied like you know with the work she's done and like you know it's just wholesome and like earthy (laughs) also other obsession i've been really waiting to hit you with this okay there is a lady whose entire account is about feeding the most adorable raccoons at her window and they have these little hands and they just come up to the window like a buffet, like or, or like a I, I don't even know, like the, like a bar counter. <laughs> and she just gives them like like grapes, and they just they love the grapes, dude. They're just like their little hands and fingers, <laughs> and they they're like hella greedy. And I just like got lost for a while. Also, on the topic of animals, uh, it turns out foxes are attracted to music. And you can basically, like, call in foxes from the wild by playing tunes upon your flute. If you have, nice. if you have a f- spare flute that you take with you on your hikes or whatever you fucking do in nature, you should take one next time and see if you can find a fox. Okay. I'm very caffeinated. I'm sorry. I'm just realizing that I just hit you with a lot of information. I saw that on our shared notes <laughs> on our high thoughts. The but foxes? I read foxes as foxes. Faxes, and I was so confused. Like Mandy, it's time to maybe take a break. And then I opened it the next day, and I was like, "Oh, that makes like foxes makes more sense than faxes, but not really, dude. It's real." I'm like, "Okay, so my TikTok, your TikTok is full of Spanish speaking, and mine is full of weird animals uh, being like enchanted. It's pretty cool." I cool. think what's happening is because I don't speak Spanish and so I have to rewatch it like 10 times and read the <laughs> caption. It thinks I'm just like really enjoying it that much. <laughs> well, it's your own fault for not interacting and liking anything. No, That's what happens. She has the most organic experience. Okay, All right, listen. listen. We, have someone on, we have someone on our show who's actually on TikTok. And yes. Like, Post real content. She's like an actual creator. And she is a guest on this podcast today. Hi, friends. <laughs> Welcome God. to the garage. Uh, <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. But yes, the raccoons, Mandy, I I, I spent probably a good, a solid 30 minutes just like scrolling and seeing what those rac- raccoons were eating. Oh I- my gosh. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. I really feel seen and heard, actually. Because and then I was, I was like, like, well, I live in the country. I could probably set up my window <gasps> to, like, make a buffet for whatever animals want to come. There you go. Let's. But, I mean, are you going to? Uh, well, I don't know how much the dogs would love that. <laughs> but we'll find out. Tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> 
The dogs <laughs> might retrieve something fluffy to you. <laughs> Tragedy. It's happened before. <laughs> Ooh, okay, yeah, maybe just in theory. Well, yeah. listen, I have some in since uh, Asia, we're going to introduce you to our audience in just a moment. Okay, but Not I need early. to wrap up this uh, animal segment <laughs> with uh, a, a special important announcement. This is fucking serious. This is hot off the press. The Did they Falcon. Say that? Do the kids know what that means? The, <laughs> press one. <laughs> <laughs> the Falcon has returned to the factory. Mm-hmm. And uh, I feel like it's symbolic. Thank you. <laughs> and I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm just. I'm just really feeling it. I'm just, I'm going to try to, Rachel suggested putting some meat on my arm to see if it'll <laughs> land. I don't know what that's going to look like, like a couple of cutlets or some like sh- shards of roast beef. I don't know, but we're going to figure it out. We're going to play with it. I'm just really feeling connected to that. So I feel like you got big predator energy in like in a positive way. Ooh, that came out yes. weird. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> in the natural sense not the uh dateline sense thanks for clearing that up i really appreciate that thank you that's anyways <laughs> welcome to the podcast asia white of fur and lace photography please go follow her on tiktok where she rachel's right she actually does make incredible content she's also on instagram she is the most amazing artist creating photography and we got to um experience that for ourselves because asia is the one who did our divine feminine photo shoot that we did in sedona last year and um before that in zion the year before um out there with um motivational madness shout out ariel at her retreats and uh we just have been trying literally trying to get you on the podcast for like the whole time the whole whole time the today (laughs) the stars align literally i'm fucking pumped about it welcome aboard she is a successful business owner booked out i would imagine until next year i knew it yes she's that good people i can't take one more destination elopement if anybody would like to uh take that but yes and all mandy? this September, mandy vow renewals eloping we'll some kind of no, are we getting married not, mikey has oh. some kind of love ceremony with me <laughs> oh my gosh i'm so down <laughs> <laughs> i feel like that'd be awesome i mean mikey can come no, he, we need protection no he's fine <laughs> My favorite thing is that Mandy was like, hmm, no, to Mikey. And then as soon as Rachel was like, come have a love ceremony with me. And Mandy's like, yes, immediately, yes. It's because we have, Mikey and I have a love ceremony every day. <laughs> we don't, I'm just kidding. I'm so stupid. I'm sorry. I'm just so excited you're on. I don't know what to do. I have nervous energy. Okay. Right. Asia, yes. before we launch into making you spill your guts about everything in the world, could you please explain to our listeners what it is you do, who you are in the world? You know, no pressure. Just, yes, you know, um, a, a little synops. So I am predominantly a wedding and elopement photographer, but I also love to do boudoir, which I'm starting to call spicy sessions because I'm learning. Number one, boudoir means bedroom. Ooh. Like that's what the word means. And so to me, boudoir isn't about sex. It's not about um being something for your partner it's about being something for yourself so i've i've started changing them to spicy sessions number one because of the meaning of the word number two oh my gosh because I love that. anybody anybody can do it any gender can do it and i think that boudoir is more commonly associated with female presenting humans and i don't want to be that person like i want everybody to feel good about themselves so <sighs> Um, I do that. And I also do um, creative, like creative styled concepts for like music artists, um, you know, any branding, things like that. So really a jack of all master of maybe one. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I love that. That just kind of like blew me away. Um, Because there is a little bit of a vibe um, around the, the culture of like boudoir photography and pictures being done and stuff. And I think that's really interesting um, to like, like I could feel the shift when you were explaining that 
just the uh-huh. change in like vibration of the words. That's uh-huh. really interesting. It kind of just opens it up so much bigger. Yes. You and, know I, I mean? and I think like boudoir feels when people hear it or see it, it feels scary or mm-hmm. it feels wrong or it mm-hmm. feels like I shouldn't be doing this or it needs to be kept a secret. And I also thought that as well, like when I stepped into this side of my business, Mm -hmm. I thought it needed to look this way and be this way. And the deeper and deeper I got with you two fools and, and (laughs) of the light, um, you know, the, the more I came to understand, okay, this shift is, is something that needs to happen for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know other people Mm -hmm. in this world need to feel Mm -hmm. this too. So, yeah. As an, mm-hmm. as an artist, like when you're coaching somebody in that space, what, what is it that happens when somebody kind of like, is like, okay, I'm going to do this, you know, and I'm really timid about it. I mean, I know how I felt. I was just going to say, well, <laughs> but let's start with you. Like, I'm like, you can't scared. see my belly button. What the fuck? Oh, that's you guys, if you could have seen Mandy, I'll speak from my point of view first, if you don't mind. If, so Mandy was like literally ditching me all weekend <laughs> that we were there. She was. <laughs> like, we, I was trying to get her to do, Rachel was all about it. Like I didn't have to yeah. convince her. Like, but Mandy was literally ghosting me, like trying to run <laughs> from like one side of the property to, property to the other and was like, no, we'll do it on this day. No, we'll do it on this day. And so finally I was like, Mandy, you've been saying we're going to do this. Um, so to answer your question in full, like the shift that happens is like, I think that they are just fully trusting me. So on my end, I have to do a lot of preparation to be able to hold space for people. Mm-hmm. I know we all experience that together as far as holding space. Yeah. I can't be in my head or in my, you know, in my own problems or issues that I'm feeling like I have while this person is literally laying it all out there for right. me to see. Right. And so I usually start with as graphic as this is, I usually start with, hey, babe, I've shot all the way up to birth sessions. So I've seen it all at this point. And so like right then and there, they're like, oh, all right. So this is probably nothing for her. And so just like being able to get like taking that masculine energy from them and and allowing them to step into their feminine energy. And this is not me saying that it has to be a woman, but like allowing them to just let go and like be, and I'll take over that masculine side. So you're saying it's the masculine energy that we, that causes us to experience wanting to keep covered up. (laughs) That's what I feel. I don't, I wouldn't say it's the masculine Mm. energy that wants to keep us covered up, but keeps us like in line, basically. Like Like, like that makes us feel like, you know, we're thinking about this or we're thinking about that or, oh, am I, you know, how do I look or how do I, you know, how do I present in this setting? So being able to just take that from them and say, girl, I've I've got you or guy, I've got you. Like just kind of feel it instead of worrying about how you're being perceived, which is how I felt. I was like, I'm being perceived. Yes. (laughs) And like, I, I don't want people to come to me and be like, I have a very specific questionnaire that I didn't get to give you ladies, but a very specific question on my questionnaire that I send to all of my spicy session clients um, that says, who is this session for? If the answer is not you, go back to the beginning and start again. And then like anything else. And then I go on to say anything else somebody gets from this is a bonus, but you know, this is for you first and foremost. So I'm setting the stage right away for them before they even come to our location. Oh my gosh, dude. (sighs) I know. Well, listen, I've never heard these two speechless in my life. I know. I'm like, (laughs) (laughs) me neither. (laughs) All right. Listen, (laughs) it's possible. Okay. Well, listen, I want to say it's, it's kind of serendipitous that you, that everything aligned for you to be on today for this episode. Um, because Rachel, you know, you, everybody knows we have our running shared note, right? So last week I got all fired up because I follow an Instagram page, which I would love everybody to go follow who's interested if you feel led, but it's called decolonizing fitness 
And it's about bringing um, awareness and eyeballs to um, areas of fitness that do not get um, platforms, right? So it's for folks who are not in typical bodies, um, who are kicking ass and taking names. And it's, uh, it's all about creating um, space for everyone at the table, which everybody knows I'm passionate about, right? So I'm going to pull up the post because I ended up, I was going to repost it and I wrote this whole long caption and I went to go post it and Instagram's like, your caption's too long, ho. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, oh, well, I guess I'll make it a blog post. And then I was like, never mind. And Rachel, so I sent it to Rachel. I was like, can you just really read this and kind of like (sighs) affirm all my feelings? (laughs) And she's like, put it on the podcast. So here it is. I'm going to find it here. Rachel, you have it saved because I cannot find it. I got it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So um, they shared that um, I, I saw a shirt the other day that read, fire your out of shape trainer. And their response to it was, how about we fire trainers who promote anti-fatness? Remember that knowledgeable fitness professionals come in all shapes and sizes Mm -hmm. having visible abs should never be the sole indicator of competence hey i'm very passionate about this i know you are and that is what makes me literally want to cry and sit on your lap in the fetal position (laughs) because a i know you're strong enough to handle this bitch and Asia didn't add this to her intro, but we met through fitness. Yep. Um, she started or was a trainer along the way and ran a club. And um, that's kind of how we all got in touch, too. So mm-hmm. she and actually, do you still do a little bit of instruction? I don't anymore. Okay. But I always say this to my clients. I'm so surprised at how much training goes into photography and just knowing how to cue people to move their bodies the right way. Absolutely. You're still a coach. Absolutely. And and I would say even more of a coach actually now in this role. Yeah. Like in a, in a way more healthy way. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason, obviously the reason I saw that post. And then of course, when I couldn't post it to Instagram in my impulsive, like psychotic, uh, Rage. Uh, yeah, rage. <laughs> I uh, I texted it to Rachel because I just wanted to feel seen and heard, and she's like, "Put it on the podcast." And really, in a nutshell, it 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 upset me because having had so much of my like platform and story obviously centered around weight loss, it's hard to kind of like rewind that to like make room for what how much more my journey has been has become since just losing weight right like losing weight and beginning a journey of fitness and making peace with food making peace with my body was like that was all just like a vehicle to like this deeper self-love self-acceptance like truly like the physical health was the vehicle to mental health uh spiritual health emotional health relational health You know what I'm saying? And so I really loathe that part of like the fitness space that just like still hangs on to that like grand time fat is, you know, sweat is fat crying (laughs) (laughs) bullshit. And particularly when talking about coaches, right? Because my experience as somebody who is in the fitness space in a non-typical body was really interesting watching other people who I like really admired and looked up to seeing them struggle and battle themselves constantly with food and their body because they felt pressure Mm -hmm. to look a certain way because they were trainers. So when I saw that post on Instagram, I was like, this is the problem. You know, I was actually approached not that long ago working out at a a gym that I, I mean, I, I have a couple gym memberships now, but I was at, you know, kind of a big boxier gym working out and somebody approached me while I was lifting and asked me, you know, he was like, well, if you really want to, you know, get serious and, you know, reach your goals, I'm a trainer, I can help you. Here's my number. And I'm like, oh, cool. I'm certified. Thanks. (laughs) Here's my Instagram. (laughs) Well, in Asia, too, you said something I liked 
the word that you use when, with how we present ourselves, mm-hmm. right? And like, I just, I think people, especially on, on like social, like present what they think they should look like or perceived. And then when I actually go to like meet some of these fitness people in person, mm-hmm. they're the most unhealthy mm-hmm. photoshopped, yep. like filter it's none of it's real. And I was like, do you never actually interact with people in real life? Like, do they not put this together or like, they just feel so shitty about themselves. They don't care. Or like, well, I I have, I would have to imagine that you run into that a lot where people like present a a thing, but it's not who it's not who they really are because they think that's what it's supposed to be. Yep. And I, I mean, I run into it off like, I would say every week with photography, whether it be a wedding that somebody's doing because they think that this is how weddings should be. And these are the things that we should do. And this is how I present myself on a wedding day. Uh, Ooh. Oh my gosh. Or a boudoir shoot who's like, well, this is what is sexy. And this is what is supposed to be perceived by the person that I'm trying to do this for. And it just, it goes on and on and on. I won't, I won't continue the list because I think that we've made a good point, but yeah, it's, it's very hard. And I, I just, I don't know how to help people step over that, like over that hump of, you know, like coming into my studio or into my house and saying, Hey, you can get as naked as you want to. You can stay as clothed as you want to. Mm. Um, so you talked about the Playboy shoot that I did. I had one girl who has never done a boudoir shoot, has never even like never stepped in front of a camera. She's a photographer herself. She just isn't comfortable with her body in that way. And that's completely fine. That is her like that's her prerogative. And so she messaged me and she's like, I really want to do this shoot, but like, uh, is it okay if I am like fully clothed? Like I feel the sexiest when I'm in this, this, and this. And I was like, yes, a thousand percent, please. I said, this shoot is to take back the power from what Playboy was and turning it into what us as women and females and female presenting want it to be like i'm taking back that power and you get to tell me what that power is for you i don't get to tell you so good so yeah i have i i had kind of an interesting thought about that like uh when you think about like musical artists because i've been really super into taylor's new album the past couple weeks Yes. And how like all the all the artists, like particularly females, are like not allowed to like go through a natural evolution. Right. Mm. And it seems like especially if they start out really young and they're famous really young, they always end up going through like their they evolve into like their sex pot phase and everybody like gives them hell about it. But it's almost like expected. Mm-hmm. But yes. then and like it, pe- the, pe- people kind of like look down on them for it. But I'm realizing like now that I'm 40 And I'm actually like more at peace with myself than I've ever been. Like all of us secretly naturally want to be a sex pot. Oh, like all of us, all of us secretly always wanted to like kind of play post for Playboy. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like (laughs) if we're being honest, bitch, everybody fucking wants to do it. You know what I mean? Yes. And if you're out there saying no, that I could never, that could not be me. No, it's like a, what do you think that is? What do you think that is like that, that innate desire within women to like want is that divine uh, feminine energy of like all encompassing expansion. It's very seductive, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And 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 the world translates it differently. It makes it like a dirty, shameful thing, but it's really not. And that's like what you're coaching people to allow themselves to, like rest into yes well i mean so kind of like taking that a step further with like that all-encompassing like powerful um the oldest one of the oldest professions in the world is prostitution and like it's like feminine energy is all-encompassing and it's always been put down put down put down put down (sighs) Not anymore. Like, I just, I, I don't get it. Like, I don't get why it's still, we have to battle to be like, Hey, 
a guy can have his shirt off on the beach, but I can't post a picture of my ass. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't get it. Mm-hmm. I don't get mm-hmm. it. So. Did you guys happen to see um, this last week? Th- Ariana Grande came out and was talking on like had to come out like with an actual statement about people commenting on her body because she had um, kind of like looked like she had lost weight, like a significant amount of weight. Like she's already pretty small, like she's a petite girl, but um, some people had started to really like give her shit the past couple of weeks about like looking really frail and looking like, you know how it happens. People just like pick pick them apart and she who doesn't really do a lot of public stuff like you know like on social media and stuff she came out and was like hey you actually don't know what's going on like quit commenting on people's bodies and it made me think of this post that i sent you because that's like the most infuriating thing to me and you wouldn't think so because like i said my whole story is began as being oriented around weight loss but weight loss does not equal health no right like weight loss does not equal wellness and i think that people still really um think that that goes hand in hand Mm -hmm. do you know what i mean trainers need to be mindful of that like i don't and i don't there no one especially fitness people no one should be commenting on bodies they're the least we've talked about this before least interesting interesting thing about us Mm -hmm. like like i am who i am is not my body and unless I intimately know your story, I would never, I would never because I don't know. And also as a trainer, I don't want to encourage something that's unhealthy that I don't know. Like yeah. I had a friend come up to me in the other gym, the gym this week and he looked lean fast. And I, I knew he had mentioned a month ago, like he wanted to lose weight. And I almost went to be like, eh, damn, man, you're, like, you're looking good. And I was just like, Man, that lean, but then, but then here's what happened. I go, man, that lean in a month. And then I had to like check myself because then I was still actually like judging his thing. Do you know what I mean? So I was like, yeah, like trying to figure it out. (laughs) Yeah, no. I brought it full circle on myself because, because I was like, don't come on his body. You don't know. And then I was judging him for being so lean so fast. And I was like, (laughs) what's damn it. So just don't say anything. We do, you don't know or let let the other person share. Mm-hmm. Like they've been working hard or they've been going to spin class you know, like me secretly. <laughs> <laughs> trying to beat Mikey. It's, 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 it's spin class. So you know, Asia, it's like a nightclub I'm on a bike. Yeah, like, I'm in. I'm also I'm part of the club. Ratchet. I have the playlist. I'll send it to you. And it is just filthy, nasty <laughs> on a bike. <laughs> Rachel, are we both underground spinners? Like I didn't know this... I was, but I, I... I've been going. Like oh. I really look forward to it. It's like it, I don't know I what it you. says about. I don't know what it says about my brain that it, like the only time it will shut off is in a pitch black room with yes. like blaring music. But I've never felt more like. Like nobody yeah, can bother spin me. Spin is it's magic. I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. It's like you feel the music in your bones and you're just like, yes, yes. I will destroy yes. you. Like You know how like... I feel about music, but really and truly, like even when I lift weights, I still can't turn my brain off. Yeah. It's gone. Yes. And it's so, and I'm tr- like, I'm trying so hard or like just trying to like be into what I'm doing. And apparently I need like hyper sensory <laughs> lights, sounds, physical things my heart rate is at a hundred percent and and, oh there we go now it's quiet (laughs) extreme (laughs) rachel prairie extreme (laughs) like damn (laughs) yeah i just i just head down usually i'm always pick the back row because i'm like you know what no one needs to witness this thing coming like every, all this mental illness coming out into the room right now <laughs> <laughs> every time i go i always kind of forget that i'm with people who are like not my friends and i'll like lift my hands and, like to the music and be like yeah like i'm in my own private music video and just be like <laughs> and like think i'm hell cool and then i remember that i'm a 40 year old cringe mom of someone <laughs> you know i mean i'm just like an old white lady <laughs> <laughs> it's no business, but, but Hey, I'm there. I'm, I'm into it. I love it. Mm-hmm. Let's, That's all that matters. Let's go. 
Okay, Rachel, you made a little confession, so I'm going to also make a confession too, right? I can't just be calling everybody in the world out all the time because, you know, (laughs) I know it's hard to believe, but I am not perfect. I have found myself actually, like you were talking about like kind of catching yourself, like being like, oh, I'm not going to judge his body, but also why? (laughs) Right. And then being like, oh my God, there I am again. Right. Yes. So same, same kind of thing. I have found myself being like uber irritated in the past couple months when like people who I'm friends with for a while and we're all like talking about like this you know shadow work and these deep you know people are moving through their trauma releasing things that no longer serve them like all the blah 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 and they want to talk about their body image stuff which sounds crazy right because this is like what we talk about this is what we focus on like this is what I am even know you guys because of this actual topic right but I found myself like getting irritated with people that they still give a shit what their vessel looks like I'm like, literally, the world is burning. We don't know what's happening uh, Mm -hmm. at at all. I don't know, you know, like, especially maybe not right now. I'm a little calmed down. But like, you know, a couple months ago, there's like trains derailing and like, you know, the the politics are insane. And I'm just like, I found I, I started catching myself being so judgmental of people who are still working on making peace with their body and like just because that isn't my f- forefront focal issue right now. Here I was mm-hmm. being like, oh my God, <laughs> can you just like, can we involve past this already? Like, ew, but it was, that's not real. Yes. That's, that's actually not real because when I dug a little deeper on that and I was like, why is this, why is this bothering me so much? Why am I being a little judgmental cunt about this every time this <laughs> f- uh, explicit podcast, whoopsies. But do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm confessing that in real time. I wasn't planning on sharing that, but I really had to dig a little deep on that and like investigate. And it's like, oh, it's because I'm not 100% actually free inside my own heart from that. And by holding this ego place of judgment, it's like giving me this little false sense of superiority that's not real. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? 100%. I had uh, somebody reach out maybe a month ago and ask a, my opinion on hiring an overweight trainer. Really? And I didn't take a breath at all. I was just like, no, this is 2023. What are you talking? Like I popped <laughs> off and, and I was like, <laughs> my bitch. I was like, somebody actually slid in your DMS and asked you that they should already know how you feel. Thank about you. That. And I, yeah. I was just, and I, that's what I keep saying to people is like, this is 2023. What are you even talking about? And I get like, instead of like dissecting the conversation, having it as an opportunity to inform them, like, you don't know their story. You don't know what they're working on. Also, your clients and members and they don't care. Like, yeah, well, according to BMI charts, anyways, all trainers I know are technically obese, <laughs> according to a BMI. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, your muscle mass is too freaking much. So technically, according to a BMI, a lot of trainers fall into that category, which is hilarious to me. But yeah, so it's like there's still a lot of like stuff to unpack. I don't know if that's just something that happens here in America still or like in Western culture. Right. Like, but it is still a thing that's happening. And so it's like the perfect day to have you on Asia because I was we were all fired up about that. And now (laughs) here you are with all your wisdom talking about how you you said get people over the hump like when they come in to do their you even said like it doesn't even have to be boudoir right like a wedding day like expectation how would you sort of gently provide stepping stones for your for your clients to get comfortable and how can maybe our listeners take away some of those tips to show how they're showing up for themselves so as far as preparing somebody up I have to know within myself that I can't fix somebody's version of their body image in oh, one day. Oh my gosh. I, that's so good. I, <laughs> I, you know, I have to know that for me and I can't go into it with any expectations for them. Um, it, it should be the opposite. In fact, like mm. when I, when I, 
book a spicy session client. I set every expectation I possibly can. Here are some of the poses you can expect. Here are some outfit recommendations. Here is, you know, if you're feeling a little bit nervous, maybe here is a meditation or if you need to take a shot or if you need to like whatever you need to calm yourself down, you might be feeling nervous. So um, my sessions specifically at my house, I have like a little I don't want to call it makeshift, but a little home studio here. I've really loved offering those sessions here because we kind of make an afternoon of it. So it's not, they get here. I'm like, okay, get dressed. We've got an hour to do this. Like, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's okay. You first you'll sit down. I'll open a bottle of bubbly or whatever it is that you want. You'll get your hair and makeup. We'll put on music. We'll just chat for about an hour, hour and a half while you're doing your hair and makeup. And then We'll talk about what outfits you want to start with. And then we'll talk about, okay, well, like, what are the things that you love about yourself? And what are the things that, you know, that you're a little bit self-conscious about? Because we all have the things. And I like, so basically my goal is to make myself look like the biggest, not fool in the room, but like the biggest, like, yeah, like, look at these stretch marks. I like, this is what I'm like uncomfortable, uncomfortable about, or like, you know, just kind of pointing out things about me. And I also dress to to the session. So if the person is showing up and they're nervous and they are wearing like a little bit more, um, le- a little bit less coverage than they normally would, I'm wearing a crop top and spandex or, I, you know, I'm matching their energy so that they're coming in, like they're coming in and I'm not like bundled up and like, okay, like, are you ready? Um, you know, I'm, I'm putting it all out there too. So we're basically two girls hanging out and just like being silly or two people. Yeah. That's awesome. The parallels that is like, now that you are like explaining the process, like to being a trainer or a coach are wild because we have people coming in total strangers We have about an hour to sit down and talk to them in a really intimate way and like build a relationship and make them feel comfortable and trust you enough to like invest in themselves. Like, no wonder you're so fucking good at this, Asia. Like letting, letting, (laughs) it's just like fitness. What you're saying, Rachel, it's like letting your guard down long enough to actually believe. Yeah. To actually like step into it. Rachel, would you say that boudoir is fitness adjacent? (laughs) Asia, maybe you've heard this in your like artsy, <laughs> I'm an you know, asshole. I'm progressive sorry. world, <laughs> but I've seen this for like two weeks. People keep throwing the word adjacent on things. Okay. Yes. So I, okay. You've seen it too. Thank yes. you. Like I saw a, uh, somebody, oh God, now I feel bad. Well, she probably doesn't listen to the podcast, but anyway, <laughs> someone started following me and in her profile says woo woo adjacent. And I was like, Okay. And then I was at this party I was telling you about this weekend and someone said that they were Mormon adjacent. And I was like, what? Like you're at the vortex of Mormon. Like, I don't know what that means. What are the kids trying to say when they use that word? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just being a turkey. <laughs> Boudoir adjacent. Is <laughs> next to. Yes. <laughs> So weird. Speaking of woo woo adjacent, listen, I don't know about you guys, but this freaking episode is wild. It feels unhinged and chaotic. We've had a <laughs> we've had a lot of like little sound technicalities and we've had to pause a couple times for technical difficulties and I Jesse's shaking his head at me already. Do not tell the audience that, please. No, I'm doing it a little bit. I'm doing it a little bit. We know why. I literally was just saying Jesse's going to shake his head at this. But right now, as we stand today, uh, it is the uh, second new moon we are experiencing in the sign of Aries, which we will move into Taurus tomorrow. But tonight, it's the last day of Aries. It is a we don't usually have two new moons in the same sign. So it's rare for that reason alone. And Aries is a fire energy, which if you guys remember from all my little breakout sessions that uh fire energy is about passions and like the sparks, literally what lights you up. Okay. So on top of that, we're also having a lunar eclipse tonight in Aries, 
which is fire, fire, fire. Like literally cue Johnny Cash. This We're literally sitting in the ring of fire energy right now, which means that all the, thi- all the things that we have been talking about releasing and the energy of releasing and moving past like old stories, old chapters, old, t- and everybody, no matter who you are, is like experiencing this in their life in one way or another. Like the old story, the old timeline, the old chapter is coming to a close. We've been gearing up for it. We've been preparing for it. And astrologically, they say this is it. So I think that we just are having like all this crazy energy because it's in the air. It's I can feel it. Can you guys feel it? Are you having a crazy week yes. like me? Yes. Yes. Right. I'm, I've been so productive this week for no reason. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I can't. I just finish things and I'm just like on to the next. Yes. When usually it takes all of my effort to like focus on one task. I'm just out here like I got a whiteboard. I'm writing things down. I'm yes. crossing it off. I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I write stuff on a list just to cross it off. <laughs> just to like have a thing that's crossed off already. Oh yeah. Is that weird? It feels really good. <laughs> yeah. See, I don't like it. It's too much. Make, makes me anxious. So I'm <laughs> <laughs> <yourself> a minimalist. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to touch on that a little bit because, you know, this is our weird woo woo uh, space. But uh, we've been talking about like last week, we kind of touched on like a review of Q1 of 2023. And I said uh, zero out of 10 <laughs> would not recommend <laughs> basically was my general uh, disposition. However, this week, it turns out, which I think is why the Falcon came back, guys. I think he knew that I was done being a dumbass. And he was like, (laughs) all right, girl, let's get back to work. We got to go eat some stuff. But I really, really feel like this energy is lending itself to like, okay, if you really think about who we've been since COVID, right? Like all the shifts that have happened all the things everybody's been working on i don't care if you're woo woo or jason or not everybody (laughs) feels these themes in one way or another and i really feel like this is kind of like i'm done with all of that i'm done with waiting for you know quote unquote normal because that's never returning whatever that means right i i i saw a post today that uh what that was about this energy and it just simply said um nothing to everything nothing to everything nothing to everything nothing to everything welcome to your new timeline and i just it hit me and i was like oh my gosh even if it's like placebo dudes don't you mm-hmm. feel that in the air i'm just like i am no longer walking in that old story anymore you yeah. know Like I'm not, maybe it's because I was in eternal winter and I didn't have enough vitamin D. We have established (laughs) that that is also a contributor. (laughs) But all the glitchy, crazy, chaotic energy that we were experiencing reminded me that this is what we're in right now. And I think we can feel it. And you know what? It it gives me hope. It it gets me kind of excited. Mm -hmm. Would you guys say, Asia, I'll, I'll ask you first. Because we invited you on our podcast and now I'm like hardly letting you talk at all because I'm just like, hey, be my friend, raccoons. <laughs> Maybe I could listen to you talk. Like if you could call me every night to just like talk to me. Doomsday just... lullaby. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Let's do it. Asia is a uh, contributor to Doomsday Lullaby, guys. <laughs> um. But but would you say that you feel that energy showing up in your life? Do you feel like you're about to walk into a new chapter, new timeline, new like are you what are you excited about, girl? Tell us, spill your guts. Yes. So I actually didn't know any of the astrological side of this. And I was wondering, I was like, something's gotta be going on. Something's got to be going on. And that literally that day, Rachel texted me and said, Hey, are you free on this day, this time? And I was like, yep, something's going on. Rachel's, Rachel's <laughs> texting me. Something's <laughs> happening. Um, and I have been feeling so restless. I am somebody who always needs a challenge in my in my life. And not to say wedding days are easy now, but I have a recipe now. And so I'm like, okay, Ooh. I need something more. I need something bigger. I need to not be just 
this person. And so I stepped into a, it felt very scary for me to step into, but stepped into a much more creative role. And I'm feeling like lit up, just like you said, like I'm feeling like on fire about it. Oh my gosh. I'm getting goosebumps over here. RDP, (laughs) how about you? I mean, you don't have to, you know, I'm putting you on the spot, but. You know what? I just put something together, which I thought nothing of (laughs) (laughs) after hearing Asia say that. I am a, I have been blessed to be in a, a good sleeper. I can sleep through anything. I sleep through the night. I just like, thank goodness. But for no reason, I woke up at 3 a.m. on the dot this morning, wide awake, energized. I was like, I, and I couldn't fall back to sleep. I was like, well, I guess I'll get up. Should I read my book? Should I try to, and then I was like, felt like, the, I had the window, was sleeping with the window open. I just had like cool air coming in. And so I started working on some of my, I've been working towards getting back into my own business. I got up, I did some of that. And I would just like, I didn't put that together until just now that, that, that ne- I am, that never happens to me. Never, ever, ever. And it was three, eight, to the point where I was like, I woke up almost like, <gasps> like, huh. like someone like pushed me out of bed. Like, mm-hmm. was there an emergency? And then I was like, Okay, well, I guess it's time to get to work. <laughs> you were, you were, a hundred percent, you were. That's awesome. And so, yeah, but I just, um, I'm approaching my career with some new energy. Getting, I wouldn't necessarily say reengage, but definitely um, deciding to like push again mm-hmm. when I haven't for a long time. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. I, but I think it's coming from working on my own stuff. Because like I'm pushing in this one area and generating joy and excitement and it's just bleeding over into other areas, which is like, you know, I wake up at six in the morning and go to spin class. I do not wake up in the morning time and do things. Mm. I'll like sit and have coffee and like go outside or maybe walk, but never in my See? life have I been like a morning person. See, this is I'm, what I'm like, saying. By it's- 10 o'clock, I'm productive. <laughs> like, I'm awake. That's a long ramp up time. <laughs> well, and I mean, to pull to pull pull all the like threads together, right? If they if anybody's been listening to us long enough, there's there's that factor, right? The energetic factor, the woo woo adjacent, right? Which I'll never say anything else going <laughs> forward. But we also know because you've been so transparent and uh, generous with what you share of your heart, like that you've also been working on your sleep. You've been working on hormone stuff like you've been taking care of all these different like quadrants. Right. Uh-huh. And it's like how cool that it's all coming together in an inferno now. This is really yeah. cool. It's really cool to see. And I thought it was I, I especially like there was something about I know it sounds crazy because it's spin class. But there was something about me enjoying it that was really interesting to me because I don't like high intensity like that. I don't like it. It's Mm -hmm. uncomfortable. It almost it doesn't sit well with my mental state. Like it it actually like kind of like takes me in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, have I just gotten so good (laughs) and comfortable being calm and quiet and alone and chill nervous system that now when I like introduce like bits of stimulation, my body's actually responding in a healthy ooh, way. I, ooh, ooh, that sentence was juicy. I know. That's all I could think of. I was like, why do I like spin? It's some kind of weird, healthy stress that I like have been embarrassed to even tell people because I'm like, <laughs> Ew, I like, I'm like a spin girl. <laughs> But I love it. Dude, I love it. Slip in. I was (laughs) the thing girls, let's ride. (laughs) Get in, losers, we're going to spin. (laughs) I would say for me, the fire energy is showing up in a lot of um uh, it kind of like around my worthiness stuff that comes up for me. Mm. It's it's showing up in I wish it were showing up in like <laughs> three in the morning and getting my ass out of bed to go to spin. Oh I wish God. that. I don't know what that was. But it for me it's been feeling more like um you guys know I struggle like uh even when we put a podcast out. Even when we drop a new episode, I will I will listen back because I have to make sure I didn't say anything terrible. 
Jesse usually takes care of your girl on that one. So thank God for Jesse. Can we just have a little moment? You're welcome. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I really struggle with cringing in like, uh, like the self loathing of, uh, feeling exposed. And, uh, you know, as an artist, somebody who resonates as an artist, it, I think it feels like that every time you create something and put it out, because it feels so raw and naked. And so it's the same feeling every time, even if I write it, just a simple, passionate, um, you know, Instagram caption or a blog post or put out an episode of the podcast. It is uh, cringy to me. And so this fire energy is showing up for me in a way that's like not allowing me to feel those things anymore. Like, I'm just kind of like, fuck it. Don't yeah. care. Nope. And, and I kind of had this download that kind of goes along with this. I heard that uh, emotions like jealousy, um, envy, resentment, which has been really big f uh, thing I've been working on releasing this year. Discontent, like all the lower vibrational stuff that we don't like, right? It can only exist in separation from mm -hmm. like our spiritual source right like god universe whatever you call it like when you are separated from that source is when you create the environment where you experience those kinds of emotions mm -hmm. okay but if you stay connected to source and there's no separation those vibrations cannot exist there which is why connection is everything you know we talk about like the scientific uh, importance of meditation and quiet and calm and the nervous system and all that, like physically that we understand that we're learning more and more about all the time. And we know that it's good for us spiritually because we understand that that's connection. But I heard this example. Okay. And it goes, it goes hand in hand with this, but it's like a TV, right? Like a TV is up on your wall and it is plugged in and it has the ability to like, broadcast various different kinds of programming you get to choose right mm -hmm. and if i were to like take off my freaking crock right now at jesse's house and throw it as hard as i could at his tv and broke it the tv would be dead the vessel would be dead but the programming is still there right <laughs> the programming <laughs> still exists the wi-fi still on bitch like, mm -hmm. right. If I want to toast something in the toaster, the toaster is what toasts the bread, but it has to be plugged into the power source. Otherwise, mm. it's just a toaster. It's a dead vessel. So if you take all that and you pull it full circle, if we are not connected, then we are like just creating this dead environment for which all these other things can come in and influence our experience. I am that I am. If I stay connected, then, and I'm not separated from anyone or anything, then there is no lack. I, I can't be jealous of anybody because if it's happening for you, it's happening for me, right? And that really just started to like click in and like light my ass on fire this week and suddenly I'm just like, get the fuck out of my way. Bring me the falcon. <laughs> I'm telling you, I feel like it's why he came back. I'm like, Pico, <laughs> come to me. I try, I'm going <laughs> to listen. It's so funny because all the dudes at my work are like very excited for me. <laughs> no. I didn't really give a fuck about the Falcon before, but as soon as he showed up today, everybody was like, Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> it already ate like two pigeons, dude. It's fucking kicking ass and taking names. And I'm just like, yeah. That's my boy. That's my fucking boy. That's Falcon. my boy right there. <laughs> then I, uh, so I don't know. Just, a, you know, just a light download for your, for your day. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, Jesse, are you feeling any fire energy in your life right now besides us no, driving th you crazy? This room is hot right now. <laughs> <laughs> So I can't separate my own fire energy right now. All right. All right. I'll let you. I'll let you. Invade. I'm actually jealous. I am jealous of this fire energy that's within our virtual room right now. Oh, OK. Well, we're going to do be a continued. Later yeah, on. We're gonna, I'm going to get into your brain right there. So thank you. <laughs> um. So Asia, being that you are woo woo adjacent. 
<laughs> okay, last one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Last one. Last one. But no, you are one of my most favorite spiritual soul sisters, and you are a successful entrepreneur and businesswoman who is making her job and providing for herself with art. So can you tell us a little bit about what that looks like? How do you lead in business with your spiritual integrity? What does that look like? We want to pick your brain about that part of your job. So this is, again, of course, it it happened that I'm here today with you ladies talking about this. Um, When you talked about bringing it all the way back of if I'm at my skinniest, I am not healthy. Mm. So Mm. when I first started this business, I was working at a club and I was also, I started this photography business, but I, whenever I do things, I do it a hundred percent all the way in. I'm not like dipping my toe into the water. I'm cannonballing into the (laughs) deep end. Um, So I was like, yes, I'm starting this photography business. I've never taken a picture on a camera ever whatever. So I'm serving my clients at the club a hundred percent. I'm also serving my clients and my new photography business a hundred percent because I'm bound and determined I'm going to make this happen. Yep. Yep. So I'm burning the candle at both ends and I have a, um, I don't know if it's, I actually don't know if it's considered auto, autoimmune, but I have ulcer, ulcerative colitis. And so that affects my digestion and everything like that. And I landed myself in the hospital for five days. I was at my skinniest ever. I was like 98 pounds, I think. (gasps) Oh my gosh. Yes. So during my first year of starting this business part-time, I was working so hard and and girl bossing to the moon, you know, uh, (laughs) so hard, fitnessing and doing all of the things. And I literally landed myself in the hospital because I didn't take care of myself. Wow. And uh, and that is when I started this journey of spirituality, of of self-care, of self-love and like really understanding that I truly do have to fill my cup first in order to serve all of these other people that are counting on me. And so that's kind of where this whole journey started of entrepreneur and woo-woo adjacent. Um, (laughs) Like truly though. I love Um, that. So it it started as a way to uh, like self-preservation, right? To, To protect your own energy, to fill up your own cup so that you could be the best for all the various roles you were, yes. you were, you know, kicking ass with, but did you find that the more you did that inner work, the more you were like letting go of those outward, uh, th- commitments and all those things? Like how did, how did it happen that you ended up just doing your business full time? Yes. So very quickly after I got out of the hospital, I realized, okay, something's got to change. Um, Glennon Doyle in the book Untamed said there's a line in there that like hits me in the gut every time I read it. It says, why do women have to land themselves in the hospital or on death's bed to figure out that they matter too or something along those lines? And I was like, yes, Glennon, preach. Auntie Glennon. (laughs) I'm a big fan. Auntie Glennon and Mama Brene. (laughs) Exactly. The matriarchs. And so like figuring that out is when I started to shift my entire life, not only my business and quickly things started falling off that I was like, "Mm, nope, this doesn't serve me. This doesn't serve me. This doesn't serve me. Um, I still, and I'm not here to be like some superhero. I still struggle with saying no. And, you know, I still am a recovering people pleaser as, as people say, and, I just, I love, I'm an empath too. So like, I love helping people and I love, you know, I just, I love talking with one, with people and I want to hear their stories, but sometimes there's just not space and time for that. And it's not Mm -hmm. them. It's me. Like, how did you, you how did you learn how to establish really good boundaries like that? My friend Courtney is a virtual assistant and she had a course that was teaching people how to become virtual assistants, but her main pillar was self-love, setting boundaries, how to like, how to say no, how to take care of yourself first. So she was teaching like all of these time blocking skills and like 
all of these like time management skills. But her first lesson was time blocking your things first. Like you're not time blocking other people's priorities. You're time blocking your workouts. You're time blocking your meal preps. You're time blocking this and anything left over is for other people. So that was the first major shift for me. And then from there, as one does, I just kept crawling down this rabbit hole of Mm -hmm. all of the, all of the practices and just how to balance, you know, the very, I don't want to call it like the grind of owning a business, but like it sometimes is like, you know, you just, you have to wake up and do your shit and like, and you can't, and you can't not because it's just me at this Mm -hmm. point, not just me. I've got two amazing uh, business people behind the scenes that help me, but it's very, it's very hard to balance it. And Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit here and act like it's not, Mm -hmm. but I would say for any business owner, it doesn't matter if you're a woman or, or whatever, but especially if you're a woman, you have to know yourself and your boundaries first. Mm -hmm. Like you, you can't start a business without knowing who you are and what your boundaries are and why those are your boundaries. If you're just setting boundaries to set them, like it, that doesn't mean anything. Like, why? Why is this the end of the line for you? Oh my gosh! You mean you have to have a why for your boundary? Did you just hear that, Rachel? <laughs> what the hell? That's a sound why? bite, bitch. I'm gonna tattoo that on my heart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving this conversation because I I was kind of like looking back. My I have a recurring theme that's coming up for me this year. That do you mean what you say? because I have a lot of things that I've said for a long time, but been frozen in action. And now that I'm not, I'm not even quite sure how I got here. Maybe I just got angry enough. (laughs) That'll do it. (laughs) Maybe I just got pissed off enough. But, but But looking back, I'm like, because I've owned my own business in the past, and I am surprised I didn't end up in the hospital, honestly, Mm -hmm. because it was working my actual job, trying to build my own job. I was married at the time, like being a partner, being a mom, all mm-hmm. the things. Mm-hmm. And I got, if I wouldn't have been changing careers, that was not sustainable and I knew it, but I just like was in it and just like kept going. And so I started thinking about that, like, oh, that's kind of been like in the back of my head, like remember what happened last time you mm-hmm. grew, which was great. I grew so fast in a short period of time that I couldn't, I couldn't manage it all. I was dropping the ball. And then I started I was like, maybe I should hire someone. But the discipline is the thing because I know the discipline it requires. And I, I didn't think that I had the energy for it. And maybe I didn't. Mm-hmm. Like, I truly didn't. I was walking around burnt out. And so the idea of adding one more thing mm-hmm. where it all depended on my ability to drive all of it by myself sounded not fun (laughs) (laughs) not good and so i wanted i've been like this question has been burning in my head for a couple weeks as i found myself charging back up and like put and stepping into a very like masculine energy like the get shit done energy which is fine like you need both but i could very easily see myself because I'm very comfortable in my masculine energy and it took me all these years to balance so I can see myself very easily just stepping right back into it and charging around and then I feel like and then I get like afraid that I'm gonna lose it like I'll lose the feminine thing that I that I still am uncomfortable with but like you're like you're soft like as a like yeah, your the softness, softness and your calm I'm trying to think of like how to label it. Like I wanted to call it like intuitive entrepreneurship. Like how do, is there, is there space to like stay balanced or get shit done with softness? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Oh, that's so good. Like I don't want to have to, I don't want to go back. Like I don't want to be out of balance. What you're like, is there a a more gentler way to boss babe? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yeah, like Yes. Okay. Number one, like the fact that you're even thinking about this mm-hmm. tells me you're not even close to the same person who is running that business years hey, ago. Hey, 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 hey. True. 
Mm-hmm. So that's number one. So you give yourself some grace there, right? But number two, yes, there's a much gentler way to boss babe. And it's like, it's just basically knowing what you want, first and foremost, not looking to other brands and other businesses. And what did I do before? What got you here? My uh, uh, my mentor, Kimmy, has told me this. What got you here will not get you there. So... Mm. <laughs> Yes. Wait a second. So wait, wait a second. Wait, wait a second. let her um, repeat it. I gotta, I need you to say that again. <laughs> so this is from my mentor, Kimi. She's amazing. Um, what got you here will not get you there. So these things work to get you to this space, but the things you did in the past will not get you to that next level. Hmm. <laughs> Mandy's deceased. <laughs> We sh- you down. silenced us again, <laughs> Asia, twice. Dude. She's up. She's up. That was something. That was something right there. <laughs> Almost a little bit like uh, you can only go as far as you've, you know, you can only lead as far as you've gone. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? So, so is it possible yeah. to, uh, like, like what she's saying, like, uh, to retain that, that powerful, the, 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 the like, silent strength and calm that is gentle but fierce that we Mm -hmm. are discovering in our divine feminine like awakening and still like be a powerhouse in the entrepreneurial space how does that work it well you already said she's she's fierce right Mm -hmm. you're gentle and fierce so fierce doesn't have to be in your face here i am here's my business Mm -hmm. fierce can be I'm ready when you are. I, you know, oh like, my god, I felt that in my soul. <laughs> you, you know, like, <laughs> and that is so Rachel too, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's like Rachel's not an in-your-face person. Like you no, are. God damn it! Sometimes I wish she was. I'm like, no, <laughs> don't pull your Jedi mind trick coach bullshit on me. I need answers. You don't. <laughs> you don't answer my question with a question to coach me to my own answer. What is this therapy? Yes. No. <laughs> I need you to tell me (laughs) what the hell to do. (laughs) But yeah, so like gently girl bossing for me specifically looks like these are my non-negotiables. I lay them out. Non-negotiables for me are I have two days off from photography life per Hmm. week. It may fluctuate what those days look like. Sundays, I am always off. I never work Sundays um, just because that's the only time my husband and I have like together off Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and then the other day is just whatever day is the nicest so I can go go and garden um (laughs) (laughs) I'm just pick and choose that way you you gotta prepare you gotta prepare that (laughs) raccoon buffet bud that's what's (laughs) you know not every it's the chickens right now they're taking all of my produce priorities I get it yeah got to and then so like you've done all this work Rachel you know how to time block you know how to like set boundaries, you know how to do this. It's just putting them into action for yourself instead of for others now. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what you're doing. We're going to let that simmer. (laughs) She said, wait, (laughs) you're going to have to put that into practice for yourself instead of others. Because you're a leader. And that... Well, it's a little uncomfortable. (laughs) (laughs) Hey... Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to business ownership. Uncomfortable is going to be your normal. And that's when you know you're in the right place. Dude, that's so good. So basically, you want to take over this podcast, right? I mean, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> what would you say as like a final question? What would you say is your absolute top tier best practice for staying grounded and like getting yourself like if you're like overwhelmed you catch yourself like oh no I did it again I'm overwhelmed I'm 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 feeling like the weight of everything I feel like I'm on the verge of getting stressed out like what is your go-to practice for getting yourself back into alignment and grounded this is gonna sound like bullshit honestly but it's moving my body um because like I'm not saying it because I'm on this podcast literally as Alex walked in tonight I'm like um, I call it my Terminator mode. I'm like in Terminator mode, cleaning the whole house. The dogs are being assholes. Like I'm like, 
what are we leaving for our workout? And <laughs> as soon as we got out of that workout, I'm like, oh, so what's for dinner tonight? Like, who cares about the packing list I have? Who cares about, you know, like everything will work itself See? out. It'll be great. Them endorphins so, really yeah. be doing something, you know what I'm saying? You know? So, yeah, it, I, I paused. I told myself, okay, you don't need to be staring at this, in, like, computer screen anymore. Get outside, drink some water, go move your body. And I wish, I wish it didn't sound like such bullshit because I'm on here, but no, it's like. No, it's not. It's, it's not, perfect. It's not. It really isn't. Like no. that is the way to stay grounded is to prioritize yourself and your health mentally, physically, emotionally, and the rest will fall in line. Yes. You got to stay plugged into that source. Yes. You got to toast some toast. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Asia, thank you so much for joining us on Spill Your Guts. Thank you for spilling your guts with us. You're welcome. We Anytime. adore you. Thank you so much for all your wisdom. You guys, please, please, please go follow her on TikTok and Instagram for Unlaced Photography. She does travel. You don't want to miss it. She is an absolute artist and a just top tier human being. One of my faves of all time. We love you. Thank you, ladies. To the garage. To the garage. To the garage.